The Church of the Jesu in Philadelphia is a mesmerizing structure, but its construction is even more outstanding when you consider the time period in which it was built. The Church of the Jesu was built in a time after the Philadelphia nativist riots, when tensions between local nativists and the Catholic community were still high. Nativists accused the Catholics of pledging allegiance to the Pope, not the United States government. To make matters worse, tensions between Irish immigrants and the nativists were also high at the time. The nativists, who were mainly comprised of Protestants and native-born Americans, formed many groups in the early 1840s which distributed anti-Catholic propaganda. Unfortunately, some of this prejudice was passed down to future generations, and even 24 years later at the time of the founding of the Church of the Jesu in Philadelphia, residual tensions still remained. So the Jesu was an extremely expensive structure for its time period, and among the Jesuits in the, the, the generations that came after Villiger, there was an opinion that they had actually paid too much money for it. And part of this that kind of makes it a complicated story, at least for me, is that it was also something that they anticipated they would build across generations. So when it first opened in the 1880s, um, it was completely white and undecorated in the interior. And as far as we know, there wasn't even a whole lot of artwork at that time. And it wasn't until after Villiger died, he died in 1902, um, after he died, that they started to set up the interior design like we see it today. And they seemingly started altar by altar and painting by painting. So we are here in the St. Patrick side altar to the church, and this portrait of St. Patrick behind me was here uh, for the very first mass offered in the completed church. So the church was completed uh, in 1888, and they had a mass here on October 4th, 1888. And we have a photo from that mass. And in, in the photo above the main altar was a portrait of St. Patrick. So I guess the obvious question is, why would you have a portrait of St. Patrick? Right? You have all the saints that you could choose and since this is supposed to be a distinctly Jesuit church, you know, why would you go with someone who isn't a Jesuit saint to be so prominently, you know, located above the altar at that time? And it seems as though, although there's no real definitive answer to this, it's not like they wrote out all their intentions for this, but it seems as though what they were pointing to was that this immigrant Catholic community, which at that time there would have been a lot of Irish immigrants, right, who, some of which, who had been alive for those 1844 riots, uh, they're saying, look at where we are now. You know, look at what we've been able to accomplish after being in the United States uh, for a generation or so, and, and this magnificent church that we've been able to build because of that. Because of the Jesus' location, many of its parishioners were members of the Irish immigrant community. As mentioned by Mr. Vaccaro, the Jesu catered to the community, and its commitment to the Irish immigrant people is embodied in the side altar of St. Patrick in the church. The portrait above the altar can even be seen in this photo on display on the main altar during the first Mass celebrated in the Church of the Jesu. The nativist riots took place between May 6th and 8th, and July 6th and 7th of 1844. As the population of Irish Catholic immigrants in Philadelphia increased, so did anti-Catholic sentiment about them. Nativists were also spreading rumors that Catholics were trying to remove the Bible from public schools. On May 6th, the first riot in Kensington occurred. By the time Villiger moves us out here in 68, like a lot of that has sort of that like really harsh like like there's no I don't think there's any evidence in our history at all once we moved out here in 1868 of any sort of anti-Catholic as a matter of fact this was an Irish neighborhood um, most of the early parishioners here in the 60s and 70s and 80s the ones who would pay for this church were almost all Irish um, in this very Irish neighborhood 
other parts of the city. Out here, this is like an Irish ghetto. In the records of the, of the church, of this Jesu church, and you look at two rentals, for example, and donations in 1910, in 1900, in the 1890s, overwhelmingly the names are Irish, the O's and Mix, um, O'Connors and O'Hara's. They're not Germans, they're not Poles, they're not Italians, it's heavily Irish. With the help of Mr. Connors and Mr. Vaccaro, we located an original letter written by Archbishop Wood to Father Villiger concerning the naming of the church. Prior to the construction of the church, the Jesuits were suspended in Europe and removed from the Mother Jesu Church in Rome. They lose the Jesu, right, and so Villiger builds, this is his sort of thumbing his nose at the Pope, kind of, uh, you take away our Jesu, we'll build a new one. This is the new Jesu. Uh, that takes place in 1878, I know, because we have, in the did, did you see it? That's actually we have the original letter written by Archbishop Wood 